Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. We continue working on our fifth version of the task list where we are converting our model over to use a database. And we had left off with the point where if we tried to create a user, we got this error message, 505 not implemented. Turns out that's actually a perfectly rational thing because our create user says to do. Yeah. Um, so we should probably do it. It's not going to uh, be very effective until we put this method in. Now, this is going to be unhappy because right now it's not built for using futures properly. We're still just doing an if on the create user, which would be fine, assuming it gave us back a Boolean, but it does not. It gives us back a future of Boolean. So what I'm going to do is here, we could even do that and dot map of user created. And then we will close that down here. If user created ah, I'm like, where are my curly braces off? There's actually two on one line up there. Okay, that makes me a little bit happier. Space those out. So it calls the with JSON body. It calls create user, uh, but that gives us back a future that we need to map. And then we can do the same logic that we had before. So if we go to our web browser and we refresh our page, And now I try to create my user. Actually, this brought up a task list for us. And I should be able to log out and log in, and that worked too. Now, there are still some issues in here because the things for like getting tasks and whatnot haven't been implemented, but we have the ability to create a user and log in. It's actually worth taking a time. I'm gonna shut this down and run PSQL on task list. No, not caps. To show you the fact that indeed this password is encrypted. By the way, the password I typed in was PASS. Okay, you, you saw it was only four characters. It did not look like this. So this is, is a hash salted password. It is, this is how you want to store things because if someone gets into breaks into your database, they still don't get the user's password directly. Now, if they do break into your database, it makes it much easier to crack, but this is a one-way encoding. So they have to try a whole bunch of possible passwords. This is actually why you want to use good passwords. If you actually use PASS, they're much more likely to guess that and be able to find that it does that it does a match for this. Having the salt on there helps, but Still, there are. Um, it's it's much better if you if you use a higher quality uh, password. But this is how you should be storing them anyway. So I just want to make it clear that we're storing these not as nice plain text, and this allows uh, makes it harder for people to see what our passwords are like, which is exactly exactly what we want. Okay, so the next feature that we would need to be able to add is probably viewing the task list. So. We were able to log in, um, but once we logged in, we couldn't see anything. So that would require adding this method. Uh, sure. And this will be unhappy because uh, there isn't a, <laughs> the message, error message here is interesting. There isn't a serializer for a future of sequence of string. Indeed, there's not. Uh, because we embedded the model dot get tasks of username in there, I'm just actually going to type in tasks there. In reality, our model gives back a future that we can map and say tasks arrow. Uh, and let's see. Um, oh, with session username is not 
set up to take a function that works with a future. And it probably does not, let's see, so we take this and this will need to be a future dot successful. And now this code is happy. Uh, I really should have it so that this gives me back the future of result. Okay. Um, now all we have to do is make it so that get tasks does what it's supposed to. Um, here again, the fact that we haven't added any task will make it so our initial results are a little less than useful. But, oh, the other thing, we're also, I guess our create user is missing some functionality. We'll, we'll get some, the task list first and then we'll come back and, and deal with the fact that you can create, now create a, a second user with the same name. Um, okay, so we do a db.run and we want to find all the tasks that have that username. You know, this is actually a situation where you can write the database query that, that does this. Um, and maybe I should actually do it that way just to show you how we would uh, go about it. Because the uh, database queries use things like map and filter, and you can also use flat map, turns out they can also be written as four expressions. And so it is not uncommon to see four yield things here. And so I can pull every user from users uh, if user dot username is equal to the username we passed in. So that gives me that user. Uh, which gives me their user ID. Because the thing is, I actually want a task in, uh, what did we call, this is why, I, oh, it's called items. They're not called tasks. So let's call it item. An item in items. And we only want those if the item dot user ID is equal to user dot id in which case we want to produce item dot text we'll open some parentheses there we need to say result and what is this currently unhappy with actually let's go and let's hit a compile. I find that sometimes VS Code, the error messages that it gives me aren't as useful. Um, we are supposed to be giving back a future of sequence of string. The items text is a string. Oh, no it is not. Ah, oh, this is, this is actually a great example here. Um, I, I didn't mean to do this, but it's actually a really good thing that I did. Text is not a string. Text is an option of string. Indeed, if we were to go look at the table, okay, that, that automatically generated file that was kind of scary, but you know, item row, you'll note that the text is an option of string. Technically, the user ID is also uh, an optional thing. And there's a reason for that. Um, the username and password up here are not, but that's because I said not null. Okay, Null values, because in Scala we don't use null very often, Slick is set up so that database entries that include null or that could be nullable wind up being option types instead. In reality, I don't want it uh, items that have null text, so I really want this to be not null as well. I also should never be able to produce an item that doesn't have a valid uh, user ID. Okay, so I just made two changes to this table. Oops. I would like to 
need to go into my database and rebuild it. Okay, so we have some fun, our error message there. We'll finish this up by kind of fixing this table. Let's go into PSQL. I am actually going to drop the old table and I'm going to recreate it. We didn't have any data in there. Obviously, if you already had this in production, you would have to update the table as opposed to dropping and recreating. It's good to discover these things early in development instead of later on. Uh, and then when we go back into SBT, we need to run code gen again because the tables are actually going to change. So as soon as our SBT pops up, we will do a run main on the code gen. I mentioned this is why, like I said, there is a version where we could call the, the code generator and pass it a whole bunch of arguments that were those long strings. And I much prefer to do it this way because if we do it this way, up oh, and but there is the factor that we need our code to actually compile. So let's come in here and comment that out and put some three question marks. We do the code gen. Okay. And if we were to look in tables now, the item rows, neither one of these is an option. And both of them had been before, which was much less uh, ideal from my standpoint. And so now we can see that that compiles and the type is a match and our task list is happy. Well, let's try running. It looked like everything compiled in VS Code. Indeed, when we run it here. Now, because this isn't memory based, it used to be that I could only use, I'd set up a few default users. Because this isn't, everything that we had should still be there. Okay, so this went to this page. We didn't get any errors. Theoretically, the task list was read. Obviously, we don't know because there are no tasks in the database. So we'll come back in the next video. We'll fix our create users to make it so that you can't overwrite an old user. And we'll make it so you can add tasks. And that way, we'll be able to see things.